Have you ever heard of or listened to the band Wild Rose? They have this song called Diggy Diggy Hole. Now, it's what I'd call dwarf metal, and the mosh pit for this song, it is just epic. I mean, it's too bad the filmmakers didn't use it in the new Norwegian comedy horror, There's Something in the Barn, because it could have been a perfect fit. Now, this is an odd mix of a movie, but is it going to be something that you're going to want to watch? When an American family inherits a remote cabin in Norway, it's not long before they encounter the legendary Nordic barn elf next door and learn the importance of respecting one's neighbors. So this really is a weird movie. It starts off as a fish-out-of-water family movie, where this American family moves to Norway, leaving the kids isolated and the dreamy-eyed parents fantasizing about turning their barn into an Airbnb. What they don't know is that a mythical creature calls their barn its home. It's a barn elf that can be a very helpful friend when certain conditions are met. But if you cross the elf, all hell can break loose. Now, the movie is pretty cringy at the start. The acting is forced and it's cheesy, but creating a harmless family holiday movie vibe. Martin Starr plays the dad, and he's not a bumbling oaf, but he is a bit out of touch with everything that's going on around him. Now, I like the naivete that surrounds the parents, especially when the young son begins to see the barn elf. They're dismissive of anything he says, which we know is going to lead to calamity later on in the story. Now, for the first half of this, there's only mild humor and not really any suspense or terror, even though the story does its best to build out both. There's small glimpses of the elf in the barn and then sneaky sounds as he quickly creeps about, but this is incredibly tame also. While it's not tense, the story progression does lead us along so that we can see the trajectory of the bad things that are on the horizon. I was really hoping the story would pick up and then go off the rails. So while the first half of the film is subdued and pretty uneventful, the second half completely switches gears and gives us a frenetically bizarre and fun fantasy horror. And I use the term horror lightly because it's certainly not scary, but there is a fair amount of violence and gore. And also, because the first portion of the story helped to create character development, there are minor stakes at play when it comes to surviving the night. The makeup and the practical effects, they're both fun and executed very well. The elves look old and haggard, but also menacing when they grimace and glare at the noisy family who's invaded their solace. And while there's not an overabundance of gore, we are given some bloody sequences that work perfectly with the aesthetic of the movie. Now, if while watching you're getting bored, just hold out because the craziness of the elves kicks in, and then the presentation is exciting, silly, even hilarious. Most of the humor comes from the abruptness of the violence, but I think it works. And the situations, they're ridiculous when the elves begin to invade the family home. They're like a swarm of hairy Oompa Loompas with just pointy hats, but the true fun, it begins when they find alcohol and guns. Now, sure, the antics are dumb, but the energy of the chase not only keeps the momentum of the story moving, but it does create some nail-biting sequences for the safety of the family. There are multiple scenes that are a bit surprising because of the violence that some characters encounter, but also it does feel like real stakes are at play, and maybe not all of the family members are going to make it to the end of the movie. Now, for as great as the practical effects are, there are some green screen sequences that are utilized. These are just atrocious. The absolute fakeness is absurd, and it broke me out of the scenes. Now, I don't know if some were reshoots and the production just couldn't get the environments to match, but what we're shown is poorly executed and distracting. Now, our main protagonist is this young boy, and his acting, it's very stoic and rigid throughout a lot of the film. Now, according to IMDb, this is his first feature gig, so I think he's going to grow in experience. But there are many times that his dialogue, it just didn't match the emotionless delivery that he was giving. Now, other times, he was very endearing, especially as he earnestly tries to befriend the elf and then simultaneously warn his family of what their behaviors can cause. I mean, he's the most sympathetic character in the film, and not only because of his innocence, but because he's unselfish and friendly. And following the same vein, I think the narrative is attempting to create a sort of commentary or maybe morality play surrounding the idea of listening to others or valuing outside input. We watch the parents of the family just consistently discount or outright ignore warnings or advice from others because they're too focused on their own goals and dreams. Now, thankfully, the theme is mildly accomplished as we do get to see members of the family learn some lessons and then begin to exhibit small bits of change. The pacing for the film is a little uneven, with the first portion being patient and slower, and then the second half moving quickly because of the excitement that the elves create with their carnage. 
So really what this means is that if you're into the movie or you really want to watch elves go ham on some unsuspecting Americans, you can endure the slower portion to enjoy the payoff. I think that payoff is rewarding. I mean, it's stupid and silly, but that's also the charm of the movie. Surprisingly, by the end, I did root for the family and I enjoyed the minor growth that they were experiencing. For the setting, it's hard not to appreciate the beauty and solace of a snow-covered forest. And I love how this contrasted with the mayhem and the brutality that the elves inflict. It's a great juxtaposition as the serenity of the isolated farm is just ravaged by drunken, pointy-hatted elves intent on wreaking havoc. And it's kind of like a chainsaw during a lullaby. The two, they shouldn't mix, but in this instance, they combine well for a lot of fun. Overall, There's Something in the Barn is a simple and entertaining holiday horror. While the first half of the movie is slower in pace and not incredibly engaging, the second half goes off the rails and becomes bat crap crazy with exciting visuals, terrific practical effects, and an exciting non-stop rabid pursuit. This most likely won't become an annual Christmas watch, but it does contain enough absurdity and energy for some casual winter amusement. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give There's Something in the Barn three out of five couches. So what's a movie that started out as just kind of okay, but then became really fun by the end? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.